Hi friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about back EMF. I said you already, in every, what is that? In every motor, generator action will take place. What happens sir? In every motor, generator action will take place which produces EMF which is in opposite direction to the supply voltage. That's why this EMF is called counter EMF or back EMF. This is our statement. In every motor, generator action will take place which produces EMF which is in opposite direction to the supply voltage. That's why this EMF is called counter EMF or back EMF. See here, what is the formula for this back EMF then? The formula for back EMF is same as the generated EMF. What is that? Phi Zn upon 60 and P upon A, the values are same. Nothing but here, Phi is the flux per pole, you know very well, and Z is the Total number of conductors, you should remember these two must and should. And of course, P is the poles, A is the area. No, number of parallel paths, A. And uh, we know that very well. Right? So, there is no difference between generated EMF and back EMF in mathematical expression. For both, the answer is same. Like, Let's take a motor, for example, this is my DC motor which is connected to the supply voltage. This is my DC supply voltage, V volts. Of course, here current flowing and here current enters into the armature. This armature having armature winding which is having armature resistance. Can you tell me what is here? Don't say generated EMF. This is back EMF. So, what is the equation? What is the equation here? Here, V is equals to IA, RA plus EB. We know that. Of course, this EB is equals to V minus IA, RA. This back EMF is very important. Sir, what is the function of back EMF? What it will do? What is the features of back EMF? What is the importance of back EMF? Here, if back EMF is zero, then there is no energy conversion. It uh, must and should needed for energy conversion. So, for energy conversion. This is the first one. Without back EMF, there is no energy conversion. And second one, the back EMF act as a speed governor. What is that? This act is a speed governing. Like if speed increases, the back EMF automatically reduces the speed. If speed reduces, the back EMF automatically increases the speed. Sir, why the speed increases actually? When load reduces, speed increases, but this EB controls the speed. If load increases, speed reduces, but this EB controls the speed. This act is a speed governor. And next one, this says controls the high currents, high armature current. What happens, sir? It controls high armature currents at starting or in general case. Sir, how, sir? For example, EB0. 
For example, my voltage is 200 volts, my armature resistance is 0 0.5 ohms. If E be 0, then tell me sir, 0 is equals to 200 minus IA of 1 by 2. So what is the answer sir? 200 is equals to IA by 2, then IA is equals to 400 amperes. If E be 0, for normal 200 volts supply voltage, the current flows in the, the current flows in the armature is 400 amperes. The motor says, I am sorry sir, I won't run sir, I will burn out. Because what is this sir, for 200 volts, it may be 10 amperes, 15 amperes, maximum 20 amperes. But what are you this? What the hell is this? 400 amperes, how can I bear it sir? It will cry. The motor armature winding will cry. Yes sir, no. So, this is very very important. If EB is there, for example, if EB is 100, 100 volts or 150 volts, then armature current reduces enormously. So, what is this? The EB for energy conversion. Without EB, there is no energy conversion. Next one. It acts as a speed governor. Next one. It controls high armature currents. It controls the high armature currents. This is the concept of EB, which is a very, very, very important for our DC motors. Are you okay? Getting or not? So, EB, back EMF, very important for DC motor, for energy conversion, for speed governing, and to control the high armature currents. Right? Thank you.